Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my first Q&A video. I asked for questions like four months ago when I hit a thousand subscribers and then I totally forgot about it, so my bad. Thanks to everybody so far who've posted questions in my comment sections. Feel free to post more questions in this comment section and uh, now I can answer your questions from the last comment section. Let's get to it. Would you recommend learning a real instrument before starting with an iwi? Wait, are you telling me that the iwi is not a real wind instrument? Jokes aside, my answer is no, not necessarily. If you already play a wind instrument, especially a reed instrument, then yeah, the iwi will be a little easier for you to pick up, but don't feel like you need to learn one of those instruments just so that you can play an iwi. If you want to play an iwi, then play an iwi. I think there are a lot of advantages even to learning the iwi over learning other acoustic wind instruments. Um, here are some that I can think of off the top of my head. One, you can play it silently with headphones. Two. You don't have to deal with reeds, which can be frustrating. Three, it's super easy to get a good sound into playing tune. It's pretty much automatic on the iwi. Four, it can be a fun way to get into music production um, because recording and editing MIDI is pretty easy. Five, if you ever do want to learn an acoustic instrument, um, some of the skills that you've learned on the iwi, especially when it comes to finger breath coordination, will transfer over pretty well. Not 100%, of course, um, there will be a bunch of other things you'll have to learn, like, well, how to get a good tone, for example, um, but at least you won't be starting from zero. The only disadvantage that I can think of is that it might be hard to find a teacher who can teach you how to play the iwi. Fortunately, I offer iwi lessons, so uh, send an email to me if you're interested in taking some lessons from me. How many years did it take to wrap your head around both music theory and technology? Well, that's bold of you to assume that I have. Jokes aside, yeah, I feel like I have so much left to learn in both those areas. I know that's not a very satisfying answer though, so let me just say that it took me a long time, probably longer than you'd expect. So for music theory, and by music theory I take it to mean like improv stuff, like what to play when, it took me like 10 years before I felt like I had a solid understanding of what was going on and a strategy for approaching improvisation, and then also the technical facility to actually play what I wanted to play. I'm 26 now, so I guess that that means that I've been working on this stuff since I was like 15. I kind of feel as though my music education in general has consisted of me trying to assemble my understanding from a collection of like random pieces of musical knowledge that have been like haphazardly delivered to me from all sorts of different sources. I will say though that there were two turning points for me um, that really helped me to like bring things together. The first one was actually teaching music because this forced me to revisit the fundamentals and think about how to connect all the things that I know and present it in a way that makes sense to somebody else. Taking somebody through a beginner method book like Essential Elements for example really reminded me that music is like not that complicated and that all of the things that I know relate back to what I learned from that method book, you know, sometimes like very directly. I think a really important part of teaching is taking something that, you know, can be pretty complex, like, you know, music theory, and making it simpler and like breaking it down into like simpler building blocks that you can put together and then understand that way. The other turning point for me was working my way through the isolated chord progressions PDF from Jazz Lesson Videos. So I'll definitely link that in the description. That was a fun exercise for me and it's something that also like sort of made me revisit my fundamentals and just make sure that I had those on lock. You know, as you learn more and more complex stuff, especially like in music school, those fundamentals can get neglected a little bit. At least that's true for me. And then when I revisited the fundamentals and got those really solid, all the other stuff that I had been learning suddenly was so much easier to implement and execute. Now, as for music technology, you know, again, I'm still learning. Music technology is a huge field and I feel like I know some parts of it pretty well, but I couldn't tell you the first thing about some other parts of it. I will say though that a couple turning points for me was one, having a really solid understanding of MIDI and what it is and how it works. Two, understanding different types of synthesis, for example, subtractive, FM, granular, car plus strong, etc. And three, understanding different audio effects units and what they do and how they work and how they should be arranged in a signal path. This is one that I'm definitely still working on though. Most of this stuff I learned as a grad student in the Music Technology and Digital Media program at the University of Toronto, where I'm about to start my second and final year. I don't know how much time I'll have for YouTube while I'm in school, but uh, you know, please like and subscribe. What got you into electronic wind instruments and what got you into music? Well, my parents got me into music when they put me in the Kodai program at the age of four. After that, I took violin lessons for a couple years and then eventually switched to saxophone, which I played in junior high and high school band and had a really good time. I was really lucky in that when I was growing up, all of my teachers, both 
private lesson teachers and band directors were amazing. They were kind and encouraging, and they really met me where I was at in terms of how dedicated I was and how seriously I wanted to take my lessons, which, you know, it varied as I grew up. I wasn't always a great student, but they were always supportive anyway. I also had a bunch of friends and mentors who would show me cool music and keep me motivated through some healthy competition, including my brother, actually, who is a killer piano player. Um, check out this video if you want to hear us playing together. As for what got me into electronic wind instruments, well, it's a pretty simple story, actually. I saw an iwi at a music store, and I thought it looked interesting. I went home, I searched it up online, and I found some videos of Michael Brecker on YouTube, and I thought, cool, I guess that's actually a pretty good instrument. At that time, I was already pretty into learning different wind instruments, like the flute and the clarinet, and I thought that learning the iwi would be fun, or at least useful since I could practice it with headphones. I'll be honest though, I didn't really enjoy it much until I got my first professionally programmed preset pack from Patchman Music. I had a 5000 and the built-in sounds were just not very inspiring to me, but as soon as I started using it with the ES2 sounds from Patchman, I was like hooked. I think that just goes to show how important it is to use the iwi with good, thoughtfully programmed sounds, and how much more successful a Kai would be if they understood that. So that's how I got into it, and what keeps me playing the iwi is my interest in all sorts of different kinds of music. To me, it's a bridge into, you know, electronic music, so I can play synthesizers. It's a bridge to different music from all around the world, because I can play really good emulations of instruments from all over the place. And it's a way for me to take all of the hard work that I put into learning the saxophone, and put that directly onto my computer through MIDI data. It would be very interesting to see a video explaining a few options a person can go about connecting their new rad to computer, sound module, etc., including a step-by-step -step instruction on configuring MIDI channels and other stuff so that a newbie to the new rad could get started with the basics. Thank you for the suggestion. I'm probably not going to do that, not because it's a bad idea, but just because, you know, the documentation for the new rad is, is really good and all that info is presented really well in the manual. I can show you some stuff though and uh, also tell you a little bit about my experience from when I was a new new rad player. So it it took me like six months after getting the new rad before I felt as though I was done making changes to the configurations. This includes all the settings like sensitivity and threshold of all the different sensors, you know, physically adjusting the placement of the pitch bend plates, and you know, even figuring out how I wanted to hold it and like what kind of embouchure I wanted to use. The new rad is highly configurable, which is awesome, but can also feel a little bit overwhelming when you're just getting started and just getting to know the instrument. A good way to manage this is to start by turning off all the sensors except for the breath sensor. Spend a couple days focusing on that and just figuring out how you want that to be configured. And then after that's feeling pretty good, maybe add the pitch bend plates and then spend a couple days focusing on those. You know, change the positioning with the screwdriver, change the sensitivity, etc. After that, you add the lip sensor and then add the bite sensor and then add the thumb lever. Each element that you add is going to change the way that you play the instrument just slightly, and it's going to add another level of complexity to the instrument. Trying to focus on optimizing all of these elements at once is probably like a little too much to focus on at first. Side note, but this actually kind of reminds me of when I switched from a closed hole flute to an open hole flute. In order to adjust the open holes, I started with all of the holes plugged, and then I removed one plug at a time over the course of a few weeks. I think a similar thing applies here. As for how to connect the new rad to a sound module, well, let me count the ways. So the new rad can send messages to a computer or sound module from 5-pin MIDI or micro USB or control voltage. If you have the wireless option, then you can send MIDI via USB from the USB out on this thing if you're connecting to a computer, or you can send it out through the 5-pin MIDI if you're connecting to like, you know, a synthesizer or whatever. This ability to send MIDI out of the instrument from a variety of different ports is something that I really like about it as it allows me to easily send MIDI to you know many locations at once, which is how I use Touch Designer to create fun visuals based on my MIDI information while also sending it to my synthesizers to create sound. Really cool stuff. How to assign the air pressure of my EWI to Mod Wheel 2 or any other function. Three ways. Um, one, you can set this up on the instrument itself by navigating through the menus, which you know can be kind of hard and confusing, especially on the EV5000. Um, or two, you can connect it to a computer and you can use its companion application and have an easier time configuring this sort of thing. Or three, you can use some sort of MIDI conversion software to convert MIDI CC2 to MIDI CC1. 
This is a really good option if you're using your Ewe with a computer. Some digital audio workstations have this built in, but some don't, so if yours doesn't, then you need to find some sort of external solution. I recommend MIDI Pipe if you're a Mac user, or MIDI Aux if you're on Windows. Do five levels of Electro Wind, simple to complex type deal, please. You know, I was going to tack this on at the end of this video, but this is actually something that deserves its own video, so thank you for the suggestion. I'll get around to that as soon as I can. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for the awesome questions. Feel free to post more in the comments section, and I'll try to do another one of these videos sooner rather than later. See you next time.